When asked to give his thoughts on the art of cinema and the movie-going experience, actor, director, and history professor Peter Weller once said this. The best reason to go to the movies is to be with other people. When people are rubbing against other people like that, humanity's better off. People expand themselves. They get out of themselves. Love. You gotta get out and be with people. Once people are out and in a movie theater, then you can inform them about themselves. The ever articulate and principled Peter Weller has told us a lot about ourselves in his roles as an actor and director and more. And learning about this gifted storyteller and true renaissance man can really tell us a lot. He has been a part of some of the most mind-bending, mind-blowing, mind-expanding, mind-sucking movies in history. And he's always stood out no matter what film he's in, existing comfortably on the line between leading man and character actor. But Weller hasn't been seen in a major motion picture since 2013's Star Trek Into Darkness, which itself ended a long silver screen hiatus. Is this man's relative absence from the movie screen a product of demand? Or might it be more down to his preference? Should his career be brought back to the mainstream spotlight like he was Murphy returning from the afterlife? Or is he too busy doing more interesting things? Let's find out a little bit about actor Peter Weller and find out a little bit about ourselves as we ask the question, what the fuck happened to Peter Weller? But to truly understand what the fuck happened to Peter Weller, we must begin at the beginning, and the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1947, Wisconsin. His mother was a third generation jazz pianist and introduced him to the music of legendary jazz player Miles Davis, who would become Weller's quote, one and only real hero, and later Weller's friend. Peter Weller's father served in Korea and Vietnam as an army helicopter pilot, and later serving as President LBJ's personal helicopter pilot, before becoming a lawyer and a judge. With these examples to live up to, is it any wonder that Peter Weller has never been truly content with being just an actor? After years of a nomadic lifestyle that's serving in the military dictates, the family Weller settled in Texas. Young Peter Weller graduated from Alamo Heights High School in San Antonio in 1965 and attended the University of North Texas, initially for music, while playing trumpet in a school band. He would later make the switch to the drama program and graduate with a Bachelor of Arts in Theater, but of course maintained a passion for playing jazz. He proceeded to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts in New York and would appear on Broadway in Sticks and Stones before even graduating. After this, Peter would appear in many prestigious stage shows. He would also appear in some TV movies before making his theatrical film debut with 1979's Butch and Sundance The Early Years. He operated under legendary filmmaker Sidney Lumet in the 1980 film Just Tell Me What You Want, followed by the 1982 family relationship drama Shoot the Moon, before landing the lead in a wonderful 1983 horror flick called Of Unknown Origin. Peter Weller's performance carried the film, which was essentially a one-man show, which earned him the Best Actor Award at the Paris International Film Festival. This film, of unknown origin, was pretty much the known origin of how Peter Weller became a well-known name. Everybody who was anybody in show business was talking about this Peter guy. And while Weller would go on to be best known for Robocop, of course, it isn't the only one of his lead roles from the 80s that is essential viewing. There was 1984's The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, which features a charismatic, multifaceted performance by Peter Weller as the titular character. And Buckaroo Banzai, much like Peter Weller himself, is a renaissance man. He's an expert in brain surgery, gunfighting, physics, kinjutsu, 
engineering, along with being a talented musician. And yeah, that's the character right there in this mind f of a movie that is absolutely bonkers in the best way possible. It's a true, wonderfully ridiculous piece of poetry. Weller's experience in this movie, Buckaroo Banzai, led to him playing in a jazz band with co-star Jeff Goldblum, who would later refer to Peter Weller as enormously talented, cool, and great. Peter Weller would form his own jazz quintet called Fly Naked, and would continue to perform with them for over 25 years. No matter where you go, there you are. Of the movie, The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai Across the Eighth Dimension, Peter Weller would say, I think because you can't pin it down, that is what the appeal is. People are attracted to the question mark. And the movie does raise a lot more questions than answers, and it's a beautiful thing. But past all the wonderful sci-fi camp and wacky cinematic wonder, Buckaroo Banzai does what the best superhero stories do, inspires you to aspire and to leverage your gifts for the greater good. The enduring appeal of the character is showcased by its being featured in the 2011 novel Ready Player One and the 2018 movie. Unfortunately, the sequel teased at the end of the original film, Buckaroo Banzai Against the World Crime League, never saw the light of day due to the lack of box office success for the original. But even though this movie didn't make money, it sure made an impression on people who appreciate stuff like this. You know, it's a cult classic. Are you in the cult? You should join the cult. Later in 1984, Peter Weller starred in First Born. He also starred in the 1985 crime drama A Killing Affair. And then came what Peter Weller would come to call his contribution to cinema in 1987's Robocop. His portrayal as Murphy and Robocop earned him a nomination for a Saturn Award for Best Actor, and he helped Robocop become one of the most iconic cinematic characters ever. Not just one of the most iconic robots or one of the most iconic action heroes, one of the most iconic characters ever. Everybody knows what Robocop is, if you're cool. Oh, excuse me, Robo, any special message for all the kids watching at home? Stay out of trouble. Peter Weller's commitment and dedication to the Robocop character garnered it iconic status. His genuine integrity in and out of the suit resonated with audiences. With makeup and prosthetics, it took him eight hours to get into costume before filming. Weller's movement and presence and performance is so powerful that he is able to draw sympathy even through that thick armor. He leveraged his captivating voice to express authority and bring gravitas to the character. Weller's obsessive dedication rubbed some of the cast and crew on the set of Robocop the wrong way. You know, he kind of went full method on this one and insisted on being referred to by his character's names, Murphy and Robo, while on set, and he refused to remove the helmet like he's a freaking Mandalorian. And he refused to remove this helmet because he wanted to stay in the character's mindset. Weller has since said that it would have been impossible to endure the grueling physical strain of playing the role without his manner of method disassociation. So he had to be crazy or he would go crazy. And even though some may not have understood Peter Weller's methods, master filmmaker Paul Verhoeven said that Weller's was wonderful to work with and did not complain too much despite being in an extremely uncomfortable suit. Beauty is pain, pain is beauty. And this right here, it's a beauty full. Co-star Nancy Allen recounted, Because of how good he is at this job, that made it really easy for me. This beautifully violent satire was a certifiable hit and has grown into classic status since its release. It's one of those movies that can be appreciated by art house snobs and people who just like to eat popcorn and watch things go boom. Weller would then go on to star with Sam Elliott in the 1988 over-the-top crime drama Shakedown. And those lead performances that those guys gave in that movie Shakedown, well, they were well received. He would follow that up by leading a great ensemble cast in 1989's Leviathan, 
which has been wrongfully labeled an undersea alien knockoff that also steals from the thing. But it's so much more than that, you guys. Just because it's similar to other movies doesn't mean it's a bad movie. And Peter Weller, he's so cool in Leviathan, and he easily fits into this underwater world of metal and fire and blood. It's freaking awesome. Peter Weller reprised his most famous role in the 1990 sequel RoboCop 2. Circumstances and schedules led to a new director and a new writing team, and Peter Weller would clash with the new faces over creative choices. Considering how poorly the sequel was received, maybe Peter Weller was right. He understood what made the original film work. And it was that Verhovian sense of humor and social commentary, which the sequel just could not muster. Robocop 2 fell into the typical sequel pitfalls, rehashing the wrong aspects of the original without the same cohesiveness and depth. But you know what? Looking back, Robocop 2 is actually better than the Robocop remake, so there's that. It's also better than RoboCop 3, but you know, so is everything. And Peter Weller would opt out of RoboCop 3 due to his poor experiences on RoboCop 2, and fatigue with playing that character. And probably because the script was even worse the third time around. And Peter Weller, he demands excellence. So instead, Peter Weller would lobby for the lead role in Naked Lunch by writing a letter to master filmmaker David Cronenberg. It would go on to be one of Peter Weller's favorite roles. Weller's typical engaging and measured performance anchored a movie whose source material has been deemed unfilmable. But Cronenberg and Weller and the incredible practical effects filmed it. They freaking filmed the unfilmable, y'all. That's right, this is a controversial mind f of a movie. But yeah, Weller makes it believable and our puny brains are able to process and at least pretend to understand what's going on. His work in Naked Lunch earned him a Genie Award nomination for Best Performance by an Actor in a Leading Role. Much deserved. After appearing in the action buddy comedy 50-50 in 1992, Peter Weller would step into the director's chair for the first time for the Showtime short film Partners in 1993. Impressively, for a debut, it was nominated for Best Short Film at the Oscars. Weller would come to call directing much more interesting to do, much more satisfying to tell the whole story. Which goes some distance toward explaining how he spent much of his career always looking to tell the best story possible. After 1994's The New Age and 1995's Screamers, Weller would work under master filmmaker Woody Allen in 1995's Mighty Aphrodite. And we all know it takes a talented actor to spit out some of that fast-paced, witty, woody dialogue. After the 1998 crime drama Top of the World and the 1999 film Diplomatic Siege, his next acclaimed performance would be in Ivan's Ecstasy, XTC, for which he would be nominated for an Independent Spirit Award for Best Supporting Male. Truly prestigious indeed. In the early 2000s, Peter Weller made the transition to working primarily on television, notably acting and directing episodes of Odyssey 5, and appearing in Star Trek Enterprise in 2005. Being a lover of learning and history, Mr. Weller hosted Engineering and Empire for the History Channel in 2005 through 2007, and he's appeared in multiple other programs for that network. In 2006, he wonderfully played Christopher Henderson during Season 5 of 24, an excellent show which Peter Weller fit right in that fast-paced, action-packed, suspenseful world. He had some great chemistry with Kiefer. After taking a slight break from television, he made a memorable one-episode appearance in the show Fringe in 2010, and this role is notable for the parallels to his famous RoboCop character, with Weller playing a man who is part machine, but this time by his own hand. He appears in Season 5 of the fantastic show Dexter, Weller played a cop again, 
the corrupt antagonist to the titular anti-hero Dexter, he was part of an ensemble that was nominated for the Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by an Ensemble in a Drama Series. It's an honor just to be nominated. And then he seemed to finally find his place in the director's chair, bringing us some of the best television in recent memory. Peter directed 11 episodes of Sons of Anarchy, from seasons 4 to 7, and starting in 2011, he actually appeared in 11 episodes in season 6 and 7 as another corrupt former police officer and final primary antagonist for the series. Weller effectively conveyed his character's development from minor threat to major player. He also appeared in an episode of Hawaii 5 in 2013 and would go on to direct 15 episodes of that show from 2013 to 2020. He also directed five and appeared in seven episodes of Longmire, portraying another great character beloved by all who watched it. And no, he was not done directing yet, he directed eight episodes of The Last Ship, and he appeared in eight episodes. He would also direct and appear in MacGyver, and direct five episodes of Magnum P.I from 2018 to 2021. That's kind of recent. A new Magnum P.I. next Friday at 9, 8 central on CBS. But yeah, one of Peter Weller's best tools as an actor is his voice, and he was allowed to use that commanding voice to play yet another iconic character, a frickin' legend. Peter Weller's voice was featured in the animated feature Batman The Dark Knight Returns based on the comic books by RoboCop 2 writer Frank Miller. That's right, Peter Weller is frickin' Batman. RoboCop and frickin' Batman. Weller was nominated for three Behind the Voice Actor Awards for this role. It's the perfect voice, it's perfect casting, and you know what? Weller's name it needs to be mentioned more when all of you nerds talk about who's the best Batman. He, he, he's up there. He deserves a mention. And I'm mentioning him now. Peter Weller would then make a triumphant return to major motion pictures with 2013's Star Trek Into Darkness. In it, he portrayed the antagonist, Starfleet Admiral Alexander Marcus. Like he has many times before, Peter Weller displayed a commanding, ruthless performance and had great chemistry opposite the story's protagonists. He was a good bad guy to the good guys, and Weller's performance is a big part of what made this movie so successful and loved by critics and audiences alike. What I'm trying to say is that he helped us take this seriously, I guess, and it worked. If I'm not in charge, our entire way of life is decimated. So you want me off this ship? You better kill me. In 2022, Peter Weller appeared in the Netflix horror anthology Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. He's in the episode The Viewing and is absolutely terrifying and beautifully creepy and hypnotic. Totally fits with the nightmarish style of the show. He's outstanding. While also voicing the character of Dr. Stern for the Marvel Disney Plus television series Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur in 2024. That's right now, this year. If you're watching this right now in this year. Overall, Peter Weller's television career has proven his versatility and consistency, as well as his ability to bring intensity and depth to every character he portrayed, while also being one hell of a director. Peter has proven himself a talented and collaborative artist, with the ability and experience to get the best from his cast and crew. Weller would also lend his legendary vocals to video games, including Call of Duty, Wilson's Heart, and he would voice Robocop again in Family Guy, The Quest for Stuff, Mortal Kombat 11, and 2023's Robocop Rogue City. That's right, our boy is still Robo. And even though I don't play video games, it just makes me feel good that these exist and Peter's still doing the Robo voice. Freaking awesome.
Peter Weller has never been content with just being an actor and just being a director. He has long been outspoken about political and social issues, never strictly aligning with any political party. He's especially passionate about education funding, and Peter made Time Magazine's list of 10 wicked smart actors in 2012. He's a multilinguist, fluent in French, Italian, and English, in addition to his education at UNT and the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. He earned a master's degree in Roman and Renaissance art from Syracuse University's Florence, Italy campus in 2004. And he earned a PhD in Italian Renaissance art history from UCLA in 2014. That's right, Robocop became Robo Doc or Robo PhD. And Weller has served as a professor for Syracuse University and guest lecturer at numerous other respected institutions, all while providing a scholarship fund to art history students at Syracuse in honor of his parents. For the History Channel, I'm Peter Weller. So yeah, what the f happened to Peter Weller? Well, he's dedicated his time to learning, teaching, playing music, raising a son, and has done plenty of appearances behind and in front of the camera for television. Peter Weller's film and television characters, especially that of Robocop and even Buckaroo, have enduring cultural legacies, which is a sign of a transformative actor. Weller could have been, and perhaps should have been, an even bigger star, but I'm not sure he ever really wanted to be. Almost like he's too good for that. And I mean that in the best way possible. Like he's too cool to be a movie star. He's an artist who's hungry for knowledge and creative experimentation, possessing superhuman drive, energy, and talent. Weller, more than most actors, exercises his various passions and skills. And so his impact was not only far reaching and long lasting, but wide ranging. With his versatile and influential contributions to film, television, music, and academia, Peter Weller has proven himself to be an actor who can transform not only himself, but also the culture around him. In his own words, he would say, My career was always full of risks, one way or another, and that's the way I like it. So nobody should give a f about what the f happened to Peter Weller, because he's doing just fine.